So credit cards, essentially, it's not going anywhere, right? The, the business itself continues to change and adapt and it's going mobile and it's going digital and e retail's dead and all that stuff, but you know, it's growing and it's ever changing and it's never going away. But ultimately, we control all the money too. So the merchants, the merchants, all the guys, all the guys that uh, are coming to ISAC, all the guys that are participating online, they all have to take payments. So it's the center of, of my world, center of you guys' world, and you ultimately need to deal with a reliable, scalable solution that can get you your money on time and and help you meet all the objectives that you have on a on a basis for for your business, right? So I think for okay. me, it just made sense for me because ultimately, you guys need the money, so you need me, right? But the, the why we developed pay certified is because we didn't want to make it a commodity. We wanted to add value. So if you combine the value with the service that you need, um, hopefully we can deliver a result that will keep you on the books for a long time and you'd be happy. Hello, Facebook ad buyers group and listeners of the Robust Marketer podcast. It is time for what is rapidly becoming the favorite part of my day, which is my 1 p.m. live stream into the Facebook ad buyers group with amazing luminaries in the industry. Uh, and today is no exception. Uh, today we have Pay Certified founder, CEO, Chase Harmer, uh, to tell us a little bit about the merchant processing system and specifically to clue us in to a way that we can uh, get our processing fees, merchant processing fees, as low as possible, even as low as 0%. Chase Harmer, changing the game in the merchant ecosystem. Welcome to The Robust Marketer. How are you doing? Thanks, Eric. Happy to be here. Great. Doing great. Yeah. Nice, Absolutely. Man. Okay. Cool. Again, this is live, guys. So if you're watching, make sure uh, you leave any questions that you might have below. Um, but I met Chase uh, through Tim Bird. Uh, he, he's been working with a with uh, Tim Bird's consigliere, uh, Vito Glazers, and I know you're working with Vito as well. Uh, and so you came on as a content like partner and and one of our top line sponsors for our event in Las Vegas. And I and, and the kind of content you delivered, I think, really just blew people away. Um, so why don't you just give us a little bit of your hero's journey? Talk about how you got started in the business and you know how you got to where you are today. Sure. Well, you know, I think when most people think about processing, they think it's pretty boring. It's a commodity business. Everybody has it. It's easy to get, uh, you know, and, and that may be true for some uh, specific verticals. But what Pay Certify really went to achieve is and how we actually grew to the size that we are today is we built out an ecosystem to provide a lot of value to the, the merchants that we service. And, and we, as we kept on innovating our products um, and building more and more to house the whole entire ecosystem of the merchants that we support, we also built out a system, an issuing system on top of our acquiring system. So acquirers, right, we process the payments, but the issuers, we actually issue the payments and we issue cards. And we basically combined both worlds together and we built a system where on the front end, we process the payments, we mitigate all the fraud in between, and then we can issue virtual cards on the back end and give that compensation that's earned on the interchange back to our merchants to essentially eliminate the cost to process, which is a very compelling offer, especially in today's space, because everybody has costs, and, um, and especially if you're scaling a brand. Um, scaling a brand can not only be uh, very hard because people go from zero to a thousand really quick, and they get funds held and things of that nature. So we can let people scale, but also give them all that all that front end revenue that they were losing back to their bottom line. So, um, you know, that we just kind of created an ecosystem that's a lot different and very compelling for merchants to work with. So. And more complete. It, it, you know, anytime if you're an entrepreneur, you're able to sort of uh, capture adjacent industries, not capture, but like, uh, you know, do well in adjacent adjacent sort of services, you, 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 know, you gain that edge. Uh, right. which sounds like you've been able to do is it talk a little bit about some of the innovations that you've had along the way like what what have been some of the things that have been different about pay certify that have allowed you to to sort of get to where you are well i think that uh, most merchants that are processing online or if they're retail and they deal with uh, some sort of third-party integration uh typically they've all had an instance where they've lost revenue um, even though they delivered the actual product or service to a client and that's called first party fraud so when pay certify first started we actually built out an infrastructure to tie consumers to transactions 
Um, once we accomplished that, we eliminated a lot of the first party fraud problem, which is the majority of these merchants that are having these chargeback issues or having uh, lost revenue products. So we, we built that and on top of that, we built out the process to essentially approve almost anything tangible or digital online. So there's a lot of different verticals that merchants are participating in, whether they're selling, selling makeup online and they're scaling super fast, um, we can accommodate that, but also uh, higher risk verticals like CBD and uh, medical marijuana and some other ones that uh, people are getting into now and seeing a lot of success, but also having a lot of difficulty scaling and keeping merchants uh, to be able to process payments because it's just one of those high risk verticals that more of a reputational risk, if you will, not an actual mm. real chargeback risk. So I think we kind of built out a whole entire ecosystem where a merchant can essentially just dive right into our system and we give them everything soup to nuts um, and basically control the whole entire ecosystem front to back, including all the shopping cart integrations. And one really exciting thing, and um, you might have asked me later, but is our Shopify plugin that we, we just got completed and um, we'll be announcing in San Diego too. So that could be uh, a game changer for people just for the ease that it'll, you know, because Shopify payments are obviously the easiest thing in the world to, to sure. sort of go through. So it'll be just as easy with pay surveyors or similarly easy, I'm sure. Yeah. So I think the biggest, uh, well, one of the biggest reasons why Stripe and Shopify payments was able to scale so fast was because of the easy, it's so easy to start a merchant account, whereas opposed to going through a, through a traditional processor, you have like 50 page application and you have a bunch of supporting docs. So what we're actually releasing in San Diego as well is the automated approval process. Unfortunately, you had to go through the traditional route, Eric, but, yep. we, actually, <laughs> but we have a link that's actually just a one page form fill and we automatically approve and issue mids um, as of uh, March 1st. So we're actually rolling that out. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. This is awesome. It's just weird, you know, we're, we're, we're talking a lot with, um, you know, the giddy up letter came out today about the white hat revolution, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to see these new sort of offers and technologies that are flour flourishing in this new environment that are really going to help push the sort of the, the white hat revolution, people building like awesome brands, awesome products and, uh, and promoting them around. It's, it's really cool to see this, you know, a service like this. And you've got a really like, who, who are your main competitors, would you say? Um, well, I think uh, as complete system as we have at this point, um, our partnership with uh, one of the second, the second largest, the world largest, the second largest world's wall, uh, largest wallet, I can't tell. Um, that <laughs> partnership allowed us to really offer a very complete uh, solution, which we were mainly focused on the US, and now we can do worldwide in 200 different currencies and 40 different currencies and 47 alternative payment methods. So, and with our back-end rebate system to eliminate the front-end cost and then earn additional revenue for our merchants through our supplier payments and shipping payments, we essentially have a product that's more complete um, as far as um, you know, front to back and ultimately delivering more bottom line ROI to our merchants than anybody at this point. But I think you know, to today's point, I think Stripe and Shopify are probably the biggest in the e-commerce space right now. Uh, but with some of the other products that we brought to the table, I think we offer a more complete solution. Um, and the ability for us to offer merchant scalability quickly is, is a big deal because a lot of the merchants, especially the guys that go to ISAC, these guys are all ballers. Like everybody that's there, you know, really is a, has a driven purpose to scale a brand, scale a product. And it's impossible to really go from zero to a million dollars in two months without Stripe or Shopify flipping out on you. So we have the ability to offer that, so that ability for our clients as well that are looking to scale brands very quickly. You're just so adapted to this new environment and so custom tailored to people in the space that yep. it gives both of you an advantage in working together. That, that's super cool. Ludwig has a question. I gotta ask though, why aren't they using their spare time to make more money? It's a good question, but when you think about it, this 2% is just <laughs> right on your money. And, and if you look, you know, we, <laughs> we did seven figures past two years and just looking at the year end report on that, yeah. you know, processing fee that just comes directly off your money before you ever get to touch it. Uh, it's a kick in, the, kick in the pants. So if you, you know, if you think about what that means for a business doing decent money, it's significant. Right. I mean, that if you're scaling a brand, if you're doing a million dollars a month or $10 million a month, $50 million a month, or even half a million dollars a month uh, or less, I mean, that 2% is a lot of money. Uh, but with the additional stuff that we're able to do with our virtual cart system on the back end for ship to for uh, people that are buying their own media 
and people that are spending money selling, sending tangible products. So if you're sending tangible products, you're dealing with a shipping carrier, you're dealing with, uh, you know, media. We actually have ability for you guys to make additional rebate on all those services you're already spending money on now. Um, so we can offer an additional 1% on your media, on your shipping, and those are big expenses, right? You, I mean, I talk to guys all day long, they're spending half a million to millions of dollars a month on their shipping expenses. We can essentially give you guys another 1% on your shipping expenses. I mean, that adds up. That's a lot of, that's a lot of revenue. And it's all from bringing it all within the ecosystem and yeah. leveraging the economies of, of scale. That's, uh, yeah. That's super, super cool. So, okay, so walk me through this uh, as a, as a as a sort of financial layman in a way. You you went you you went over to begin with. But basically, because you own the the processing and the issuing side of the mm -hmm. of the payment process, you're able. So so back up a little bit. So pay yeah. so payment. You're taking the payment. Issuing is basically that you're you're getting a bank to issue the funds into your account. So essentially, when so the difference between acquiring acquiring is a uh, the processors right. So it's and acquire right. But you have uh, you also have issuers, the guys that are actually issuing the credit lines. When you're when we're issuing the credit lines, when I issue that card, I actually make all the interchange because I'm taking the risk on Eric Dick defaulting on his payment, right? So I'm making the majority of that. Mastercard and Visa make a small minority percentage of that, but they just do it on such a big scale that they're making trillions of dollars. So because of the fact that we're getting all the interchange, we share it back with our merchants. So essentially, every single time that we issue our cards and we pay from it, whether that be a supplier, whether that be a media company, whether that be a shipping company, we're able to generate all that income and essentially give it back to you guys and take a small percentage so that way we can grow as a company as well. But we share the lion's share of it, uh, up to two to 2.2% of it with our with our merchants that we service. So that ends up being a lot of money, um, you know, especially when you add up all the things we can do with it, not just uh, the supplies, but all the other big expenses that merchants have on a monthly basis. And this on top of just the use case for how it's so much more efficient in terms of scaling, in terms of uh, all of these things that the more legacy businesses aren't set up to to accomplish. So it's a, it really seems like a no-brainer. And, and honestly, the feedback from your talk uh, that you gave in Las Vegas, first of all, I have to say your talk was uh, probably the most polished talk. Uh, in, in that it was like, yeah, it had like a narrative. Like it was, it was a very, very good talk. Got the message across, told you was really well. You know, you know, help me with that. Okay. I could tell you practice, which is something we always appreciate. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we thought it was great. And it was a super compelling offer. And then you also did such a good job. And I'm actually today, I'm, for, for the other sponsors, I'm just writing up like a checklist of like, here's how you get the most out of your, your sort of experience at sure. our events. And we're basically going to follow what you guys did. Uh, because, uh, it, you know, it, it, it was a really cool experience to see it working. The, the, the key is paper lead forms. Dude, you know, this, paper, is, this goes yeah. back to old, yeah. You got to do it old school, bro. Like, you know, these these shows, like everybody's there. And the other thing is, is that everybody, there's a lot of speakers that everybody wants to talk with. So if you have the ability for them just to just fill out a small piece of paper, if they're interested in the product or service, uh, then it makes it a lot easier because then they can go hear somebody else and they don't have to spend time uh, with me if they don't need to. I, they, I can always get back in contact with them. So it's ended up working a little while. Yeah. I think the alternative is you end up with this like conversation where you make some good connections with a few people and you, you walk away from the show thinking, okay, I made some big clients. That's great. But if you're actually taking them in on mass with, with paper leads, you're just going to be able, it's so much more concrete. You're going to be able to make more out of, out of those leads for sure. Sure. And now with our new process where we can just send the link and go through the automated approval process, and then they can just go use the plugin and populate it all in Shopify. It um, it'll make it a lot easier for not only my staff but for the, all the merchants that we're working with, and a lot less of a headache to get approved and and up and processing the to skyrocket to the moon. Very cool. So let's talk a little bit about the business. Like, what drew you to the money? Obviously, this is, this is, the question sort of answers itself. But what drew you to the money? So like, because you're right at the heart of, of the of the business. You're not selling T-shirts or mugs. You're just your money man. What is that well, like? You, so when I, so when I take a step back, my dad was an electrician. He tried to make me an electrician. So I tried to go and do that day every single day. It's a great trade, uh, but I was just like, dude, I'm not doing this every day. So um, you know, I ended up into the credit card business. But and then I, my dad told me, he said, listen, if you're going to get into a sales position or sales business, make sure that you're going to have something that's going to be around for a long time, and people have to use it all the time. So credit cards, essentially. It's not going anywhere, right? The the business itself continues to change and adapt, and it's going mobile and it's going digital, and 
e retail's dead and all that stuff, but you know, it's growing and it's ever changing and it's never going away. So people are going to run credit lines till they die. Uh, most of them die with a bunch of debt, and, but ultimately we control all the money too. So the merchants, the merchants, all the guys, all the guys that uh, are coming to ISAC, all the guys that are participating online, they all have to take payments. So it's the center of, of my world, center of you guys' world, and you ultimately need to deal with a reliable, scalable solution that can get you your money on time and and help you meet all the objectives that you have on a on a basis for for your business, right? So, I think for me, it just made sense for me because ultimately, you guys need the money, so you need me, right? But the, the why we developed Pay Certified is because we didn't want to make it a commodity. We wanted to add value. So if you combine the value with the service that you need, um, hopefully we can deliver a result that will keep you on the books for a long time, and you'd be happy. But you got to work a lot with banks. We do. We do, which is an interesting a challenge, I think, because there's such a there's you know compared to this fast moving industry that we're in, there's you know I'm sure you've got it down to a science now, but talk a little bit about like what it's like to work with these giant institutions. Well, yeah, I actually have to fly out to New York tomorrow to actually have a couple meetings out there, but uh, the banks they actually so one really cool thing that we were able to do is because a lot of banks uh, reputational or for whatever reason they don't want to take a certain client we're able to have those discussions because of our platform and they'll allow us to board clients that might have a chargeback issue or might have something like that so they'll allow us to take a risk and board these merchants and show the successful patterns that we're able to generate for our merchants but uh banks in general move like snails and uh you know it's, it's just time right i mean we started this back i mean i've been paying since i was 19 but we started pay certified back in 2014 um and it took a long time to build to where we are today, not just the technology, but the banks behind you to support you and trust you, to allow you to do things that merchants want you to do and expect you to do. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> part of that timeline was not just the build, but uh, having banks basically move like slugs. You know? Yeah, so. yeah, very, uh, very interesting. So how big is the company now? Uh, we have uh, 42 employees uh, wow. currently, so uh, we process uh, currently about seven seven point five billion, uh, and uh, we're growing, growing pretty rapidly. Um, with this new technology that we're releasing, I think that and the new plugins that we've been able to build, uh, 2019 should be a rocket ship, and uh, you know we're just we're just happy to be at the, the right place at the right time and be able to talk to great folks like you and, and all the ISAC community. Very cool. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's a fortuitous uh, relationship for us, obviously, as well. You're you're you know, anytime you you're adding a sponsor, um, and we're lucky. All of our sponsors have been able to contribute, you know, on a content level uh, that's sure. really valuable to the audience. Uh, yeah. And you're obviously no exception to that. So that's uh, it's it's an easy fit when when you have such a compelling offer. Uh, and uh, and yeah, and you're a dynamic speaker as you are. But enough about how great Chase is. He is. <laughs> We 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 spent some 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 fun times going out in in Vegas. I'm sure we'll be the same in, uh, in Las Vegas, or sorry, in San Diego, just around the corner. But uh, talk a little bit about what you hope to accomplish in San Diego. Well, uh, you know, we really really want to uh, we want to be able to help. So everybody that's on Shopify right now, and all the guys that we've talked to, the Shopify payments or or Stripe, there's there's a few big things that they're having issues with. The biggest one that I see is scalability. So essentially guys, especially all the guys that I stack, they, they do a lot of volume. Um, they're growing big brands and they all get stuck at some point or another because they grow too quickly. Um, or maybe they had one too many chargebacks on a monthly basis that, that kind of threw them in a spiral and tried to hold their money, something like that. So I think the biggest, the biggest one is we want to be able to help brands scale. We want to help people scale faster um, and be able to give them all the resources that they need to actually, you know, make sure that their investors or, or their shareholders, stockholders in the companies are, are happy. Uh, but also we want to put, uh, we want to give them all their money back. So essentially processing has been such a bane on people's existence. It's like, it's the necessary evil. You know what I mean? You need it, but you don't want to pay for it. You have problems. There's integration issues. So I think we wanted to just make it as simple as possible, but ultimately put all the money back into the merchant's hands that we support. Because um, on, on our model, even though we're actually giving all the money back to the merchants, we actually make more as a company because of the way that our system is structured. So our, our, our 
what we really want to do is is add up to 10 percent roi to all the merchants that we support um you know our bottom line profit you know so if we can get up to with with the three products that we have inside of our system and the fraud elimination and, and consumer friendly fraud elimination i think we're able to add positive real bot, bottom line dollars to any merchant that is going to this event um 100 but our goal is to at least help uh, at least 100 merchants from this event do just that so very cool this time you'll bring more pens i know that was a bottom yeah line more video. pens more paper <laughs> more pens. i also got more, more guys cool. back that are going to help me this video is kind of slammed back there so we have a few yeah. more people that um we're going to be back there and, and helping answering questions and we're going to even run through some live demos too so people can see how easy it is to plug it in Nice. You know, as you as you've experienced our uh, our events, we're, we're not one of those events that sells. We're we're not up there yeah. selling courses, selling. You know, we're that you're you're there for the experience. But the okay. exception and the balance that we've struck is that we bring in these super high value partners, uh, yeah. and they're making offers that are just genuinely good. Uh, yeah. Will there be any kind of offer for people in the in, that who attend the the event or watch it via live stream? Yeah. So I think what we're gonna do is for the first ten merchants that we have that have signed up and approved we're going to give them a thousand dollar credit on their first month so it's ten thousand dollars and in backing credits that we're going to give them plus we're going to wipe out all the fees that are associated for any merchant that we get there for a sign up and boarding and the whole integration process and we're going to guarantee that they're going to get at least one percent back to their bottom line i guarantee that so essentially if we're signing them up at let's say like a a Shopify plus rate, like at a 2.4%, we're gonna give them a guarantee that at the end of those 30 days, they're gonna see their rate at least at a 1.4%. So like, you know, basically the way that our system works, we have to do it on the front end and the back end. So when you can immediately look at it, worst case scenario to be 1.4. That's the guarantee. Now we can do a bit better, bigger and better than that, I think, but uh, that's the guarantee. That is that's quite a lofty goal, and I see what you're doing, and I like it. You're going to create the first ever table rush at an iStack event. <laughs> well, I you see know, what your plan is. yeah, man. You know, I think that you know we're not forcing anybody to do business with us. I think if you see that our offer is compelling enough, then we'd love to talk to you further about it. Very cool. Nice. Well, I can't wait for San Diego. Let's talk a little bit about. Um, I, I'm, I'm reading more and working more in my personal life on living with intention, setting intentions, having goals. You know, you're in a position, uh, as you say, you're potentially boarding a rocket ship here with with yeah. where you know this business can possibly go. What's your relationship like with intention, and what are your goals with this whole thing? You know, our, our, our we have so the end game. I've been doing this for such a long time that the end game. You know, finally there is an end game, which is good because you see the light, the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the intention obviously is to grow this to a company that's worth a billion dollars. Uh, we think that we can do that in the next two and a half years. Um, and essentially, you know, be able to just board as many people as possible. As far as like monthly, we, we kind of break it down into weekly goals with our team. Because anytime that I try to do, I set goals out there or set intentions, setting intentions is great because I think it all materializes as long as you're proactively taking steps to achieve those goals. But uh, it's hard to maintain a real bottom line balance. Like if you're doing it, like hey, like I'm gonna send, I'm gonna sign up like a hundred merchants in thirty days. Well, like if you're not proactively looking at that, like every few days, every week, then it's impossible to achieve it. So I think intentional mindset, uh, manifestation. I believe in all that shit, man. You know, like that's real stuff. You know, manifesting reality, it's real. You know. So, oh, so now, here we go. <laughs> I've just been waiting for someone to bring up reality manifestation. Dude, uh, totally. Angela, my director of projects, is going to a meditation retreats. It's it, there really appears there. I think we're. This is just a little side note, but I think we're we are in, undergoing some kind of awakening as a people. I think yeah. a lot of us are realizing that uh, that intention, you know, can can you know obviously strongly dictates reality, and that's our that's our challenge in life. That's our that's our burden and our our awesome opportunity and. It's really cool to get to talk all the time with all these amazing people who are who are doing it. Like, uh, what's on a bucket list? Like, what's on? You're trying to build a billion dollar company. Give me something fun that's like on your bu bucket well, like, list. What I really want to do is I want to just take a year off and then just like just cruise around the world. That's basically my bucket list thing. And 
I want to do, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I want to do, but essentially just like experience life. You know, I feel like business has always been my first priority for so long. Um, you know, obviously I have a son, so that's a priority, but you know, yep. uh, building this company where I think it's going to be has always been the priority, but it's hard to do that and take a year off and you can't do that kind of stuff. So I really want to spend some time just being myself and like, you know, having a, having a break. So eventually one day that will happen. That's on my bucket list. Uh, and, and, and just experiencing really cool life things. You know? I so. think that's such a common thing for entrepreneurs who are in the tunnel, you know, who are on this, you know, to, to feel like one day there'll be this time when they won't be and they'll be, but, the, but the reality probably <laughs> is really it's probably just another tunnel. It's probably just another <laughs> tunnel right after it. So it's, it's really got to be a conscious thing. So it's good that you have it set in your, your bucket list of intentions. Well, you know, this is all just a simulation, right? So we're just in a simulation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I got to talk uh, micro dosing with Chris Key. So, yeah, let's talk simulation theory. I am pretty sure we are in a simulation also. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a total simulation. So we're in a total nice. simulation and we're just actually looking at it. There's, we're, we're manifesting what we're thinking we're doing, but it's like in a dream and we're just like watching it all unfold between us. Now, if you want to have conversations like this, you've got to come to the speaker's dinner because, you know, we're going to be talking mostly business uh, at the actual event, but at the speaker's dinner, people people cut loose, we have a yeah. few drinks. We usually, almost always end up talking about simulation theory, so uh, oh, yeah. that'll, be, uh, that'll be a treat as well. I'm super looking forward to the speaker's dinner because everybody's off the stage and they're out of their suits and they're just they're just looking to have a good time and, and really provoke conversation, mind-inspiring conversation, and all the guys that are gonna be at that dinner table are, are, are anxious to, to, to get things going talk with everybody yeah so. we started doing these these hot seat formats and they're, they're just magic like people just uh really you know it's amazing that the level to which people are willing to open up and you know they take the stage they tell they tell the group of speakers their problems and uh and usually there's some solutions that come out of it that can be actually game changing that's awesome like oh I, oh i should be remarketing oh yeah I yeah that's, like, <laughs> that's part of our whole strategy that we're doing as well the whole uh, remarketing stuff retargeting stuff all that stuff yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, I'm doing them so often. Let's keep it short and sweet. I think we covered a lot here. If yeah. anyone has any questions of Chase below, uh, make sure you reach out there. Chase, feel free to drop any links that you have uh, for people that, that want to sign up. Keep us posted, obviously. We're going to hear all about the app. But uh, yeah, man, we'll see you in San Diego. You got it. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. See you soon. Cheers. Bye. Nice. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching again today. Uh, Chase will be answering questions below. He'll drop some links uh, for his amazing offer that he's able to make about uh, his company. And yeah, we'll see you guys in San Diego. We're just uh, eight days out from this thing, less than eight days, just one week out. And it's shaping up to be uh, another awesome one.